everybody, and welcome to another comics-loving, comic-centered episode of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with comics creator, writer, artist, inker, all the things, Andrew Pipoy. Andrew, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely my pleasure. I think we've been trying to connect for a little while, um, off and on, and glad that we found a time and a space that works well, and always enjoy your work and, and glad to talk with you and loving the space that you are in with oh. uh enjoying the Batgirl up there and is that what is that next to Batgirl by the way um uh, let's see that, that is let's see. oh the uh, the other way with that globe on top that is my Eisner award yeah yeah I just wanted to throw that out there because mm -hmm. um that, that is a celebratory moment by all means to to make sure that we talk about that Will Eisner and um your award-winning work as well so thanks uh, yeah absolutely absolutely so so what was it about comics how did you get into this this profession and, and you've been doing this for a little while as well which i'll make sure to to mention some of the titles that you've worked on that folks might know um you've worked on a lot of titles the question might actually be what characters haven't you worked with um, that, that is always point. yeah one of those things where it's like what haven't i worked on it's been, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been very lucky, and that's one thing that's kept comics interesting. You know, for as you said, a long time. This this year makes thirty four years I've been doing this professionally. Uh, so, uh, a long time, and um, yeah, just working on the variety of projects. You know, like that's that's something that that keeps it fresh and exciting. And but, you must have started young. I did. I did. Yep. Well, you, you you know you you asked how I got into comics. So yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, so, I mean, my, according to my mom, you know, I was, I was drawing comics, um, you know, like little, I was drawing little superheroes from a young age. And certainly I know growing up, I was a fan of watching Super Friends every Saturday morning and watching the, you know, the Linda Carter Wonder Woman TV show when it was on, uh, which, which led me to buy my first superhero comic with my own money an issue of Wonder Woman, you know, that I, I, uh, with a, with a, you know, drawn in by that Jose Luis Garcia Lopez cover. If, if you know his work, I mean, he is, mm -hmm. he, he was then and is still what, like one of the absolute best comics artists of all time. So how could little, you know, eight-year-old me not be drawn in by that cover? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, but, um, but what really I think led to me drawing comics was, um, you know, Superman the movie had come out when I was in fourth grade and I loved it, saw it multiple times. And I got... I can't remember what I had, but I got really sick for a little while there in fourth grade and I was home, you know, and my mom um, picked up at, uh, at the store, this little bag of three Superman comics for a buck. And, and I, and I read them and I loved them. And so she went back and got me a different bag of three superhero Superman, uh, Superman comics for a buck. So, you know, loved those. And um, when I got better, I started going out and buying other comic books and, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, started buying Superman and that led to Batman and other characters and soon being, I guess, being, being me, you know, I, uh, and my mom said, I just started drawing the superheroes and I, I do remember certainly by, you know, I, uh, within a few months I was discovering all sorts of different characters. There was this little sort of antique shop down the road from us that, uh, that just to keep the kids, you know, occupied and, and, and stuff had a stack of old comics there that, you know, you could buy for, you know, 10, 15 cents a piece or something like that. And, and so, and so through that, I was getting all these beat up older comics and discovering all this stuff and drawing all these characters. And that led to me eventually drawing my own. Um, and, you know, I guess, I guess I was a, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. My, my mom used to call me pertinacious. If, if pertinacious. You know Pertinacious, you know, you know that she, word. She was an English teacher. She was um, an English. Teacher. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know that word. Okay, so you see those trees that grow upright up a very steep side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. That is, that is, th those would be described as pertinacious trees. They, do, they, they, they are going to hang on and grow up on that, despite you know, despite that 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 mountainside trying to knock them down. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, so I was always out there, you know, I I like. I, so I created these characters and then, you know, one day after school without telling my parents, I went down to our local newspaper office and asked them to publish my comics, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, with my, with, you know, of course I was in fourth grade, you know, but, um, enterprising, 
but I was, yeah. And I, and I did, and I, and, and so, you know, it sort of shows you how I even just started out, do, you know, with this, I was already, you know, gonna, I was gonna make this happen. And, and by, um, let's see, summer. So I was creating my own stuff, trying, trying to do something with it. And summer after sixth grade, I ended up taking a summer art class in comics in the big city of Grand Rapids. Cause I, I grew up in this smaller town, Holland, Michigan. Uh-huh. And, um, uh, and so Grand Rapids was the big city for us and uh, ended up taking this summer art class. And uh, the teacher was Mike Gustavich, who you may have heard of. And uh, that led to me producing my first fanzine. Uh, I, I ended up like the class project was, you know, create a character and draw the first three pages of it. I created the character and ended up drawing the whole thing. Um, wow. Yeah. You know, drawn, drawn, ended up drawing the whole story, which which was sort of done with the encouragement of one of the other kids in the class, Tom Nagovin, who is still out there doing, he, he didn't end up going into comics, but he's very much in the art world. Um, and he, he, decided, he decided at age 10, let's throw a comic book convention in my garage. And, nice. and um, yeah, and uh, said, finish that comic book. And so, you know, my dad took me over to his office building that he worked in uh, on, a, on a, you know, Saturday afternoon or some evening or something. And, we ran it off in the office copier, you know, <laughs> yeah. it was making fanzines. And so, like I said, that's, that's just sort of how I, I was, I was young and doing that. I, I, sh- I should backtrack. Uh, I talked about um, this small town. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that really got me going in comics was um, right around that same time was down at the uh, public library. Um, yes. I was very lucky that at a you know at, that that in the late 70s early 80s when there weren't a whole lot of you know comics in most libraries my library actually had a pretty you know for a small town in michigan um actually had a pretty good selection of comics books you know um like a lot of the nostalgia press reprints of uh, flash gordon and terry and the pirates and things and the smithsonian collection of newspaper comics and uh, they had the World Encyclopedia of Comics, which was a reference book. So I would wander down there. My, the library was about two blocks from my grade school. And I'd go there after school and just, you know, here and there on different days, was trying to read from cover to cover that entire World Encyclopedia of Comics. My dad would pick me up afterwards. And eventually the librarians noticed this and, uh, and noticed this 10-year-old kid uh, always in there. So they um, said, would you like to meet a real cartoonist? And I was very lucky, you know, that that uh, they set up a, a, a little get together with me and Rick Yeager, who had drawn the Buck Rogers newspaper strip from 1933 to 58 and was doing other strips at the time, you know, in the, in the late 70s there. And um, he happened to live nearby and he they they got us together. And I think that was another thing that really it was it was a combination of him meeting him, a real cartoonist who told me how it was actually done. And, the, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and seeing that like this, this was something that real people could do and with that combination of Mike Gustavich a couple years later, um, you know, actually getting to do hands-on work with brushes and dip pens and things like that when I was only 12, that really wow. got me that, that early start. And so I was just, you know, I continued to make fanzines all through high school. I was standing in professional portfolio lines by the time I was 14 um you know like i said i was gonna, i was gonna make this happen <laughs> yeah it, it sounds like it and um you know started getting nibbles by the time i was 16 but um i was uh, you know i i i uh you know I was, I was 16 years old i just got my driver's license and started dating so i was you know too busy doing that for a little while but i mm-hmm. i did you know i did keep pushing and in college I, I sold my first professional work to uh caliber press between my sophomore and senior year of i mean my sophomore and junior year of college and um, came back from a semester in Rome uh, where I had decided to get a little too arts and pretentious for my own good and was going to do the great European graphic novel, but for America. And, yeah. and um, uh, you know, shopping my stuff around. And somebody said, look, you know, at uh, Innovation, if you remember them, Innovation Comics. I do remember. I do remember yeah, Innovation. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Diana, Diana Light said, looks, looks like you'd be a good inker. Would you, would you like to try inking? I was like, sure, I'll give it a shot. You know, and she gave, sent me some samples to do. And that same day, I ran into one of those friends of mine from like, you know, middle school and high school who had also been doing fanzines, uh, who lived in a small town near my small town, uh, Tim Eldred who later went on to work for Lucasfilm and places like that. Um, he, uh, he was like, oh, I'm penciling a miniseries for Malibu. You, you know, we need an inker. You want to try inking? So it's like two people, same day, 
um, saying, hey, you want to try inking? Um, I, I, I did, you know, my, my uh, parents uh, sprung for a plane ticket for me out to San Diego. Uh, mm -hmm. My parents were always very encouraging and very helpful and still are. My parents are fortunately still with us and, and uh, are, are still, nice. you know, very supportive and helpful these days. And, um, uh, you know, and, and that was back in the days when you could just walk into San Diego Comic-Con in a hotel ballroom. It was not the massive Comic-Con that it is mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, went and showed my stuff to Innovation and didn't get the job, um, but went and showed my stuff to Malibu and got the job and started inking. You know, so there I was working, you know, that's between my junior and senior year of college, working on that. And, um, and then I, you know, I worked up some samples and again, with different people I'd met along the way over these years, you know, uh, I, I was able to go to Marvel and DC, the Marvel and DC offices on my spring break of my senior year. And I walked out with the flash annual to do. <laughs> so yeah. I was, that's, I was literally impressive. Yeah. So I was very lucky to a lot of times just have the right people the right connections the right uh you know uh just being literally in the right place at the right time and and also just the perseverance to keep making it happen and so that's that's how i got in and i've been doing it ever since wow yeah and, and the word of the episode is pertinacious, pertinacious. Mm -hmm. yes yes yeah. yes I, I love the shout out to the family support shout out to the library support um, and how great to to have met a cartoonist at an early age that could help you kind of see the realities and talk about that a little bit. It's a, such a wonderful story. And, yeah. and I remember Malibu. I remember Malibu. I came to comics in the late 80s. My story's a little bit like yours as far as being sick, being at home. Parents get you comics and you go, oh, what is this? But mine was the late 80s. So it was actually it was more like the Batman film. Um, oh, okay. Whereas uh, Christopher Reeves was, I think the one of the connections for you there with the Superman film that you mentioned. Right, about ten, about ten years earlier, yeah. Oh, um, so yeah, and and then I remember your stuff in. So I, I started reading and got exposed to Malibu very early on, and then um, the New Warriors. Yeah, was one yeah. of the yeah I really really cool well. team. Yeah, no, I I uh, I. I... I had done um, like an odd fill-in issue earlier on, um, mm -hmm. New Warriors, but then I ended up helping out on a couple bits of some some lit of some issues a couple years later, and then um, they were looking for a new team to do the book, and mm -hmm. I tried out and I didn't get it, but then they ended up changing things up just a few months later, and that time I did. So I ended up on the on the book for about its last couple of years. Uh, did it till its final issue, number seventy five. Uh, Patrick Zerker was the uh, was the penciler I was working with on that. Uh, Evan Skolnick was writing it. It was uh, it was and it was fun. It was a good book. Yeah, you, you've done the writing side. You've done the penciling. You've done inking. Do you have a favorite role? Is it inking that's the go to for you? Uh, what, what what do you mean? Um, as like, far as like your favorite role in. in the oh, industry of, and comics. Oh, of, the, of those of those three, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I I don't know that I have a favorite role. I mean, I always prefer to write and draw my own stuff if I can. That was always my goal to begin with in comics. I had never planned on being an anchor, you know, mo primarily, um, and certainly I'm I'm not primarily an anchor anymore because well, there aren't a whole lot of people making livings as anchors anymore. Um, but, uh, but I hadn't planned on, it. I just sort of fell into the inking and, and that's what, you know, but fortunately that's what was able to support me for 25 years. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I do, I did enjoy it, but I, you know, like I said, I'd always planned on writing and drawing my own stuff. That's what I'd wanted to do. And now that's what I'm trying to make happen. Um, and, and speaking of that, I'm going to say the word Kickstarter. I think there's a Kickstarter mm -hmm. that's happening. There is a Kickstarter that's happening. Um, I, you know, depending on who, when, when everybody's watching this, um, my Kickstarter is running from June thirteenth to July thirteenth, twenty twenty three. It, it, uh, it's all for my characters, uh, Simone and Ajax. I've been doing these characters for uh, much of those thirty four years. I've actually been doing them. Uh, uh, I, I did my first story with them in late 89 it was published in 1990 in my college arts magazine and this is simone and ajax 
Simone is a 20 something girl and her best pal happens to be a three foot tall cartoony dinosaur. It's not a pet. This is a sort of an odd buddy comedy. Um, you know, they can go any time or place I happen to feel like sending them. I always tell people uh, if, uh, if you're looking for anything deep and meaningful, this is probably not it. Uh, but if you're looking for a, uh, an odd comedy about a girl and her best pal dinosaur who, um, and it, you know, go to all these different strange places, like say this, you know, this is the previous book that I did. This is the, the Kickstarter I did uh, a couple years ago. Um, this book contains a pirate adventure, a Western adventure. Uh, they go to Transylvania. There's a detective story. Um, and uh, it's, it's just full of ridiculous jokes, uh, growingly bad puns. And it's just it's just fun, and that's that's sort of like what I'm I'm going for in, in what I do, whether whether it's Simone and Ajax or even some of the other stuff I've done elsewhere. Mm. Um, there's enough there's enough dark in the world. The world really could use some fun and some jokes, and just you know just just you know hate yourself for laughing at some of these things. But um, you know, but I, but I I I want to you know I want to I want to make fun comics, and. Uh, you know, and this, and like I said, so this book came out and people noticed, oh, there's a, there's a th three on the cover there. And people asked what happened to books one and two? Well, um, I, like I said, I've been doing these characters for years and book two is effectively this, uh, the first color collection that IDW published about 13 years ago, uh, which is now out of print, but you can also mm -hmm. find a copy. But throughout the nineties and into the very early two thousands, um, I did uh, a whole series of black and white adventures uh, in a variety of different anthologies, arrow anthology, mythography, negative burn, and others. And uh, those stories have never been collected into a book. So now, if you were wondering what happened to volume one, now volume one is coming. Um, and this sort of a little, a little, this is, is not quite the final art, but this is the, you know, uh, the, the, a collection coming up here. Uh, with Simone Ajax in what's black and white and red all over. Get it? You know, bad joke. Nice, it's, nice. <laughs> it's, you know, because it's black and white comics. Oh, and, love it. And they're, you know, hopefully red all over. But uh, yeah, so the Kickstarter is live. I'm going to be doing a 160-page uh, collection, collecting all the black and white comics that I did with them, plus a lot of extras, including, uh, like I, I used to do entire mini comics sometimes for my holiday card. And so I'm going to have all, all six mini comics I ever did, plus some other bonus art and things like that from the time. And um, I hope, you know, it, it's going to write at, at first, it's going to be a paperback, but one of the stretch goals is to make it a hardcover because of course I like hardcovers. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and so, yeah, so it's live, like I said, between June 13th and July 13th. And if you are watching this or listening to this after that date, um, you can always go to peepoy.com. My last name is P-E-P-O-Y, spelled just like it sounds, uh, peepoy.com. And there will be a link up in uh, either, either on, right at the front page, there'll be a pop-up or there's a buy books button up at the top. And that'll lead you to wherever you can get these books. Because right now these books are only available through me, not comic shops. So I'm hoping, you know, you can check out, like I said, you know, uh, the, the people will check out the Kickstarter or they'll be available on Indiegogo or like I said, on the buy books button on, on peepoy.com and just check it out. And if you go to simoneandajax.com, there are preview stories that you can, you can read the first six pages of several stories I've done with Simone and Ajax if you want to get a taste of what, you know, of what they're like and, and what their kind of humor is like. Nice. I, I'm just writing that down so I can link it. I'll make sure to link all of those in the description on the podcast. And you have you have an Ajax behind you. I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, I, yeah, he's he's actually a little Sinclair Dino dinosaur, but but you know it works. You know, some 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 somebody got me that thinking. Oh, it reminded them of Ajax. I and... oh, love it. Love it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I can I can mention for the listeners. Uh, the you know the, if you if you want to go directly to the the campaign. While it's live, um, it's uh, the, the the website is bit bitly. You know, if you've seen those, bit.ly backslash Simone and Ajax one, the number one, not not the uh, spelled out one. Very nice, very nice, and we'll we'll link that as well. I appreciate it because yeah, you know, I, I like I said, I hope people who are looking for a little fun, some some cheesy jokes, uh, you know, they'll they'll find them in find them in these books. And and like I said, with this new one. It's going to be coming out. You get to you get this you get the origin story of them too. You get to find out what what in the world is this 
is this woman doing hanging out with this little tiny dinosaur and why are they together? Mm -hmm. And and you mentioned the sort of the fun that you like to have, which I think is, is totally a, it's absolutely a wonderful way to spend your time in comics. I'm going to say dinosaurs. Mm. I did do dinosaurs. Yes. With uh, Mm -hmm. Michael Huslin, you know, another fun series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll admit I was a little too old for the animated show by the time it aired in the, in the 80s, but um, uh, the, yeah, um, Lion Forge Comics contacted me about doing some samples for this thing, and I had no idea when I, I started doing the samples that it was Michael Usland who was uh, the creator and writing it. Michael and I had known each other for like 10 years already at that point and had kept trying to find a way to work together, uh, and just nothing ever quite clicked. Uh, for us to be able to do something and so and, and then and then they told me oh yeah it's michael and i'm like oh cool you know and they did because lion forge didn't know that we knew each other either so that was fun and for those who don't know who michael uslin is michael uh started out in comics in the 70s and had worked dc and been a writer but his uh real claim to fame is uh he's the executive producer on pretty much every dc universe movie from the very first tim burton michael keaton batman movie on up to the present i I recognize that name from the comics and the credits yeah so yeah it's a great collaboration there yeah yeah michael's a really cool guy so it was it was just nice to be able to get to work with him and you've done this again amazing range from uh new warriors to fables um Batman Fugitive, if I'm getting that name correct, Bruce Wayne Murderer. Uh, oh, was, yeah. I, did, yeah. I did the Rob. I did the Robin issues that was part of that were part of that. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. So so much out there to uh, to enjoy. Do you have a? I, I'm sensing that um, Simone and Ajax is one of those favorites. But any other favorite kind of collaborations that you've had over the years or titles that you've worked on? I mean, I've had a lot of fun doing doing a lot of different stuff. I mean. Um, as far as like writing and drawing, um, you know, th- that's not a collaboration, but I'll just mention a couple of favorite projects I did that way. And then I'll go on to the others, but yeah, um, certainly, uh, Katie Keene, I wrote and drew, I got to write and draw a revival of Katie Keene for Archie comics. Um, mm-hmm. Katie Keen was my mom's favorite character. So I got to work on that. And of course, you know, had to make sure I did it right because mom was reading it so yeah and, and and she'd know if i was getting it wrong because it's you know that was her favorite so i did like an update of that or i uh had worked with jay mater on the little orphan annie newspaper strip for a while i did a sort of an update on little orphan annie mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and that so that that's another you know just i i love classic adventure strips uh as you can see behind me i've got like terry and the pirates yeah. ali oop uh the floyd goffertson and mickey mouse and of course one of my favorites if i can get my finger in the right place right there those brown books um mm. are the uh, uh complete uh roy crane wash tubs and captain easy uh, nice, just one, nice. Of, one of my absolute favorites and uh, i love the strip so i'm glad i got to actually work on one of the classic strips you know even if it was just for a short time um other favorite things uh simpsons i worked yeah. on the simpsons. i worked yeah. on the simpsons for 18 years uh as an inker and and that was just that was just one of my favorite professional experiences on anything. It, it was not just the artists, but it was the staff. Um, it was like a little it was like a little Bongo Comics family. Um, everyone and, and everyone was just everyone was great, uh, you know. And and the you know, the editors were great to work with. The pencilers always were giving me fun pencils to to ink, and it just like I was talking about how you know I like fun comics. I mean, The Simpsons were always just fun comics. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And, and I just had a great time. I just had a great time working on that with like, you know, Bill, Bill Morrison was the editor in chief, but he's also a great artist. Uh, you know, Nathan Kane, uh, uh, Jason Ho were all, you know, I've worked with them on the editorial side. And then I, I worked with great artists, you know, great pencilers on there, like uh, John Delaney and James Lloyd and, and Rex Lindsay and, and you know, Matsumoto and stuff like that. So it was, I was just very, I was very lucky to be getting to do that. And it was, and it was like a little family in many ways when you all hung out. Um, another book that was kind of like that in a way was Fables. Um, uh, there, you know, we actually refer to it as the Fables family. Uh, there, there was a there there was a core group of writer. Uh, well, you know, well, Bill wrote just about Bill Bill Willingham wrote just about everything on it. Um, but uh, um, there were other writers who were also part of it at times, and there was this group of artists. And we, 
uh, like we would often bounce around on the different books sometimes. So like, you know, I'd be, I, I started out working on Jack of Fables, but that led me working on Fables, which also led me working on Literals and Fairest and Wolves Among Us. And so I ended up dabbling, you know, in, 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 to some degree or another on almost every Fables title. And, and, and a lot of the other artists would bounce around as well. And, and uh, so it was, it, was, and it, was, it was great. We always had these fables dinners in San Diego and things like that. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. so I, I've been very lucky to work on all those things. Or, you know, and I've had favorite, you know, and, and I, yeah. Anyway, I could ramble, but I won't. <laughs> You're good. You're good. It, it's been quite a career and the, the career is ongoing. The work it continues. Is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even besides Simone and Ajax and pushing that, I mean, I'm still working on other things. I'm currently drawing uh, an adaptation of George MacDonald's Fantastics. Are you familiar with that book? George MacDonald, I've, that sounds familiar. It's a 19th century fantasy novel that uh, apparently was a huge influence on Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. And and, uh. Uh, and I am drawing the second half of the, uh, of the series for uh, Cave Pictures Publishing. And so that's in the works, uh, coming out sometime, um, pro probably will be in comic shops and bookstores as, as well, but I know that you can pre-order it currently through their Indiegogo page. Nice, so, very nice. And, and so, yeah, so, you know, so yeah, I'm still working on stuff. I, I'm, I can't say what it is, but yeah, I just turned in a cover sketch that got approved today. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time with this stuff. Oh, I haven't even mentioned Archie comics really, have I? No, no, we have we haven't gotten to Archie. Because that was another that was another big part of things was uh, working working for uh, you know doing a lot of stuff for Archie Comics. Oddly enough, people really associate me with doing the Archie characters, but the majority of my time they were spent working on Sonic the Hedgehog because they had the license for that. But um, in in later you know in later years when they uh, af after the Katie Keene stuff, they started having me do a few covers for like Afterlife with Archie, which led to doing other covers for Archie, and the covers did pretty well, I guess, from what I've been told. And I get a lot of people coming by and having me sign them, and so now a lot of people seem to think, "Oh, I'm drawing Archie all the time." But I, you know, I just do some covers here and there. But I had a great time, and I, I really love those characters because I'm I'm not only uh, working on them, but I'm a fan of a lot of those. I actually have. Um, like the first 500 issues of Betty and Veronica from the very first issue back in the back in the uh, late 40s. And it's it's great to hear the story of the fan who also gets to work on the things you mentioned drawing Superman as a kid and uh, Superman was part of part of your life as well and yeah uh, I, I I've only gotten to do a little bit of Superman not much uh, but at least I got to work on Superman and I got to ink Kurt Swan a couple times the guy who was the artist who was you know the superman artist for like the from from like basically the late 50s until the mid 80s you know so uh, i was lucky enough to get to ink a superman pinup by him um and a teen titans i uh, got to ink part of a teen titans annual that he drew um so yeah so i, I like i said I've, I've been lucky to get to work on all this all this fun stuff all over the place at all the different publishers you know godzilla barbie uh x-men a lot of x-men stuff in the 90s mm -hmm. uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, like, like you, like you, I think you mentioned to me when we were talking before this, uh, um, you know, it's sort of like, what haven't I done? And yeah. I mean, there are things <laughs> I haven't done, but, but I, but I've been really lucky to have gotten to work on such a wide variety of stuff. Uh, as we're coming down to our last couple of minutes, any, well, well, first, any spots on the road that you're stopping at convention wise that you'd like to mention, I always like to give folks the chance to do that, but then, uh, any character that you would love to take on that you've not yet sort of had your hand on? Well, let's see. As far as on the road, yes. This year I'm doing more conventions than I've ever done in any given year. I've actually got, uh, coming up in the next few weeks, I've got uh, Heroes Con in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, mm -hmm. I'm for the first time setting up at the American Library Association here in Chicago. Uh, that's where I live now. Uh, in Chicago in uh, the, the following weekend in July, I have three cons. I'm doing uh, the Wyoming Pop Culture Con, like the second weekend. Then I'm doing San Diego Comic Con. Um, and after that, I'm doing, for the first time, uh, Terrific Con, which I hear is a great show. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, August, I've got Fan Expo Chicago here in town. September, I have Baltimore uh, Comic Con, which is one of my favorites, and, uh, the, and Retro Expo Dallas. And then in October will be the New York Comic Con. And uh, November is uh grand rapids comic-con you know sort of go back to my old stomping grounds you know and yeah. uh go you know, up in elmira new york so a lot of shows and there's a couple that might or might not happen as well that 
So, so I just say to everybody who, who wants to keep up on what I'm doing, go to peepoy.com. I try to post the stuff. I have a newsletter that I send out that you can sign up for. That's great. And you can follow me on social media. I have a Facebook fan page. Uh, so if you see the one that's a photo of me, that's my personal page. So try to find the one that's got the cartoon little headshot of me. That's my fan page. Sign up for that. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Peepoy. And Simone and Ajax also have their own fan page on Facebook and, uh, and, and, and Instagram. So, you know, you can follow me on social media to find out where I'm going to be. As far as who I'd like to work on, I mean, there's a huge list of yeah. that. I mean, you know what, uh, first thing that comes to mind is since I, I, I have, you know, I, I'm, I'm about to go, you know, like in, in, the, in the next few days, watch that Dave Stevens uh, documentary that just came out. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I you know, love to work on the Rocketeer. I love um, the Rocketeer. Yeah. 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 You know, Rocketeer and Betty, that'd be great. Uh, I'm looking over at my bookshelf over across, the, you know, I've got another bookshelf on, you know, across the way here, you know, I'd love to work on the spirit, you know, or, uh -huh, uh -huh. or the, the, the new gods or, you know, something like that. Um, uh, you know, I've only gotten to do a little, you know, or like, you know, with the cartoony stuff, I've only gotten to do a little bit of Josie. And that was when they were doing Josie manga. I've never gotten to do classic Josie and the Pussycats Josie. Um, I would love to do that. Uh, Dan DiCarlo, I actually got to, I was lucky enough to know Dan DiCarlo who created Josie and Sabrina and all that in the later years of his life. And he's my number one influence. And so I, you know, and I, I would love, you know, I love working on, on the characters he was best known for because he is my biggest influence. Um, so, you know, I'd love to do some Sabrina. I've only gotten to do like a cover for Sabrina. Uh, so. Fantastic. Well, well, quite a career uh and yeah lots lots to check out and thank you so much for for jumping on i'll make sure to share the links as part of the description it. yeah and i'll also share thanks the video for having, thanks for having me you know I, I appreciate you helping get the word out about that and just uh always good to talk about comics and you know all the all the fun comics you know that are out there anyway absolutely anytime anytime always glad to talk to you and thanks again thank you